Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint in watercolor step by step this adorable line in wash of a Valentine's girl carrying a bouquet of heart balloons. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hello. He did so many important things. He makes sure the camera is pointing at the techniques that I'm talking about and demonstrating or the colors that I'm mixing. He also reheats my coffee and catch, captures questions from you guys during the live stream. If you're here during the live stream on Facebook or YouTube, it helps to put your questions all in caps because that allows my moderators to know that you're asking a question. And uh, when they see that, they might be able to find a video or link that will help you answer the question. I've done like a thousand videos between my acrylic channel and this channel, more than a thousand, like so many. And so sometimes there's a video that has a quick answer to what you're looking for or a blog or some resource, or your questions might be answered on the show. Um, I'm going to go over all the materials, give you some tips. If you're really new to the class, I do have resources for if you're new. Oh, speaking of heating the coffee. Um, I see so many people in here today. Hopefully you guys got the text. Uh, so if you get that little last minute notification. Um, if you're really, really new to watercolor and you are like, what materials? What do I need? What's going on? Well, I do have materials in the description below, but I also do a thing where I have a set materials that I use uh, all the time here. For watercolor so once you buy the color collection up then you're done or the materials and so there's a blog on the website watercolor wednesday and humans introduction and answers about exchanges what you could use if you have something else some different information about paper uh, if you're really unfamiliar and some information about brushes or pens and things and it is a helpful thing now doo -doo -doo, let's put a reference to the side and I'm going to explain about the paper. I am using a paper called Fabriano 100% cotton watercolor paper. It is 140 pounds. They're 9 by 12. And it's cold press, which means bumpy. The bumpy paper. If you don't like the bumpy, you want hot press. That's a smooth paper. I like the bumpy. Um, and I like the cotton. And I like this particular paper because it has a very good sizing on it. That's a finishing coating that goes on the paper that controls how my paint sinks into it. In watercolor, the first thing I think it's important to get a better quality of is paper. Um, if you can't get the Fabriano, uh, a common paper that's available is the brown covered Strathmore watercolor paper in 140 pounds, and they make a block also. Um, and that's a good entry. Today's pen I'm gonna be using is the Faber and Castell Pit Artist Pen, and thanks to online resources like Amazon or in-store resources like Michael's, you can get these pretty easily now. And this is a waterproof pen. Um, anything that's waterproof uh, is great. I found Sharpies that work. I found Bic pens that work. You just want to test that it's waterproof um, and it'll work. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a no-fail drawing experience for us so that even if you're new to drawing and you're not taking my drawing course and you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing, you can just use the traceable, transfer the image on, information on how to do that's on that blog, and then you can ink over. Um, on these, when we do line and wash, uh, one tip if you wanna paint during the live is to come in with your light lines in so that you're ready to ink and wash. But I will be talking about it as I ink to give you an idea of how it's constructed. Um, colors today, I know I've got pyro red out, quinacridone, magenta. I've got a little opera pink. I will tell you a brand specific thing. I like the opera, uh, Rose Opera from uh, Senelier and the La, La Aquiel line. Opera is a common color in watercolor. You can find a Daniel Smith, a lot of different lines. I like this one because it's very light fast compared to the others. I do have a little transparent pyro orange, burnt umber, quinacridone gold. I put out some nickel ozo yellow and some Hansa yellow and of course quinacridone magenta. And I have my uh, altering blue to get into the purples if I want to. Now, I may not use both yellows, and I might not get into both browns. That's going to be something that I kind of make a decision as I go. But again, I always use those same colors, so uh, it's always good for you. And remember, as this dries, it doesn't mean it's not usable like acrylic. It's still usable. Shall we start inking, guys? I see America a 12U. I went way out and splurged on Escoda brushes, and I dig them. I believe magic is in them. I'm officially a brush knob. Uh, no, that's just practical. Escoda brushes are just a good brush. And my Jasper Stardust brushes that I get that are these crazy artful custom ones are actually Escodas. He uses the Escoda business end and then turns the handles. It's pretty cool. You can find him on Instagram for the brush knobs out there. I uh, highly recommend him and his work. I think he's really cool. And he makes watercolors too. Weird little boutique watercolors that I think are fun. Hi, Grace Porter and Cat Lady and Jen and Amy. All right. So let's begin with the inking. 
Now I'm going to start in the center of the page. And the reason that I ink first, um, you can ink at the end too, is that, uh, but I ink with students first. That way you guys know uh, that you can't really go too far off topic. And I'm going to come around making short little delicate lines on my pen. This is the brush nib on it. When I come to where the hair is going to come in, I'm going to make a little kind of round dot. Some lines will go in longer. This is the hair being pulled back. I'm not going to worry about where the flowers are because those are going to be kind of an open bit. And let's bring some hair that we blow back. I like to do little lines sometimes to help talk about the flow of the hair as it goes. I'll be doing that with my brush as well, but it's a nice way to go. Line and wash is a really fun way of doing watercolor. And it's a great way to help you relax while you're learning the techniques um, because you're not so stressed about the picture not coming out. You can see I'm very light with my lines. It doesn't take a lot of line to anchor the drawing. It's very little light to get the hair in. I'm going to come in and talk a little bit about the dress and the little line into her shoulder. Got a little shoulder coming off. Little tip when you're drawing a figure from behind and the hair is covering the head and neck, remember that if the head is going to end about here, you have to give at least a little neck to hold the head up. I'll do some little lines just to talk about the dress fabric right there. I did not do a black line on the balloons. I kind of did it on the little um, stems and things where like, like there's a little string coming down or maybe there's a little string peeking through. I did little lines like that, but I didn't line the balloons themselves. And the reason for that is, is I like their lightness. How are you guys doing? Uh, Lily Cleveland, can we have a reference, please? When John comes back in, I'll be like, throw that reference photo up. And I think we can keep the reference up the whole time. John? Uh, okay, they're looking for a reference. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I can't see because you have the chat up for me. Ah, that's wonderful. I'm going to begin with just a small round. This is a number 10 soft aqua. So uh, for the brush snobs out there, for the people who love brushes, soft aquas are amazing and they're a good alternative to your Escotas. And I'm going to come in and just start to paint in the little hearts that are my balloons. I like to paint them sort of individually in at first and I get the balloon all wet. And let's come in with a little mix of quinacridone and my pyro red. And I will lightly stroke to the outside and allow the color to bloom into the balloon. You see this here as it's blooming in. And get a little more red, a little heavier. Now at the end, I can always put in more reflections with acrylic or gouache, but any ones that you can preserve at the beginning is just better for you. Look at that little artful balloon. That's wonderful today. I'm not going to bother that one anymore. Couldn't be better if I tried. I'm going to come down and do a nice focused uh, forward balloon. This one's also kind of fully showing. Hmm. So I'm going to get a little bit of my quinacridone and pyro red again. And you can see it come to the outside and allow it to bloom in. That's what I wanted to see. That's what you wanted to see? The bloom. Cup out of the way. No, we're, we're in there. And I'll try to get in there so you can really see it. That's the whole joy of watercolor for me is those little moments where the paint flows through the water. Now, I like to leave little areas that could be uh, light and reflective up top, and that's because, you know, balloons can be very reflected.
get a little bit of my red here. And tie off a bit at the end of the balloon. I like tube paint because you can really load the pigment in it, but if you're using the pans, the half pans, there's nothing wrong with that. They're both equally okay. And pull that up in there. Come in and again. Come in here. Maybe this one is a much stronger quinacridone. And I kind of have to have planning when you're doing this kind of work because if I put a wet balloon near another wet balloon, my balloon would bloom into the next one. They'll balloon into each other? They'll balloon into each other. And the thing to realize with um, watercolor is that the color goes where the water is. So it's not going to go where I haven't put any water out here on the paper, but it'll go everywhere that I pre-wet. That's a thing that it'll do. And I, so I can pre-wet any balloon that is not near a wet area. Now, what was it before you had called it a, when you find something pretty on a painting that you don't want to mess passage. with? Passage. Passage. Okay. So on that last heart you just did? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go once. I want to wait. I don't want to miss Okay. This you want to show a passage that you think is really pretty. You just should I not think, touch. Is that what that is? That, that, that you, because you, I've noticed you intentionally left some of the bloom. Yeah. I, I try to because sometimes, you know, you don't want to take away all your hard work, right? And so I was like, is that a passage? I'm going to go back up there and look at it. See up there where the, that little baby oh, bit yeah. is? This, this right here yeah. would be like something I wouldn't want to lose entirely. Let me go find that. I'm going to come off. in and get my uh, quinacridone pink. I mean, uh, my opera pink. Kind of pop some color there. It's fun to get the little different colors in. Wait for John to get back so we can move. John? Okay. Uh, I but it's I can't go anywhere because I'm gonna okay. I have to move around balloons. So um, now where are we? Now we're I'm gonna be. This one is dry enough now. I can paint this one. Oh. Just painting around. You just paint inside the lines that you drew. Let's get some really nice opera paint going in here. Nice sometimes to use different reds and different pinks on uh, strongly Valentine's things or strongly monochromatic things. That's one color. I'm taking paper towel and I'm making sure that I've got a nice reflection there on that balloon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reflections kind of match up. Is what we try and do. Come in here and try to paint a little background balloon. I've got a background balloon. That balloon's like, I'm no background balloon. You can't hold me down. Little balloon humor. Well, I mean, we all need some balloon humor, humor don't we? You know. It's one of those things, either, you know, it floats or it doesn't. Now, I always try to make sure that as I'm painting, um, as much as possible that I use the white of the paper rather than coming back with acrylic or gouache because it's just a stronger technique. I'm going to get some red here. Um, but it's a goal. Don't let it be something that, you know, holds you down and keeps you from enjoying your painting. Bring a nice little stroke around there. 
I'm just trying to keep a lighter value up on the heart or the blown out part of the balloon. You can see it's just a matter of being like, ooh, that is that dry enough? Is it dry enough? I don't know. I make some of my opera pink and my quinacridone. Maybe bring the dark value in front there. Come around that edge. Tie off a little balloon. Not terrible. I'm going to come in and maybe increase a little reflection. I'm going to get a little of my uh, quinacridone magenta. And this time I might get just a little bit of my ultramarine blue. I'm going to come here. This balloon is sort of in the pack, right? Among the balloons. It's among the balloons. That's where I am. Is that where you are? Among the balloons. Just wet that in. And it can have a like... little bit of a highlight, but you don't want too much. Because it's, you know, inside. Inside, inside. The insider balloon. Okay, and we'll let those all have a bit of a, of a thought, of a think here, right? One of the nice things that we can do right now is work on some skin tone. So I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone, right? That's not too much. And uh, maybe a little of my Hansa yellow. Get kind of a peach. That's really all it is. And you can see it's quite light. And then where I want things to be darker, I can get either burnt umber, maybe burnt umber would be good. Just a darker version of the skin tone and come in on the inside. Is in shadow. And this only refers to, to fair skin tones, right? Um, but generally, uh, in watercolor, in skin tones, whether you're going from a deep and dark skin tone to a very fair skin tone, you still paint lightest to darkest. So you would still put your lightest skin value in your skin tone and then continue to deepen it as you went. Go like that right there. That's a good skin tone. And skin tones for light skin are just generally a peach. And I'm just making sure that where the arms are close to the dress, that there's a bit of a shadow. Another little trick, I can take a little bit of my opera pink. And I might put a little splash of that at my elbow. It's a splash. It's not a deep thing. And I can even add a little to my shoulders on the outside edge. Just a little bit of color. You can wiggle your brush to blend anything that you want to soften the lines on. Um. Anyone ready for a bad dad joke? Always ready for a bad dad joke. Uh, uh, the butcher's wife, always ready. Um, oh, and there she goes. Why do seagulls fly over the ocean? And then you tell the, the um, punchline. Uh, the acrylic cow has gone from the calendar. Has it been canceled? No. No, it has not been canceled. And I will see why it isn't on the calendar. It is Saturday. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For sure. <laughs> Worked really hard on it. Saturday. This Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for letting me know that something's missing off the calendar. Uh, thank you. All right. Now, I'm going to come in and... Huh? What? Is, oh, because if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's true. All right. Now, this is this balloons are kind of open, but I want some deep. I want some deep red. So I'm going to come in here and get my red and maybe even a little of my altering blue. I'm making a very deep, almost burgundy color. And I'm going to paint in the spots between the balloons. Right? Because there's more balloons. We don't see them, but they're here. Huh? Oh, okay. Cool. I am so glad. Nobody likes to tell me stuff is missing off my calendar. <laughs> Just not a, it's not a thing the team likes to tell me. <laughs> Where? Where? Why? So see how we're just putting some deep red here, talking about how there's balloons in the background. They're in the background. This is a full bouquet, right? This is a wonderful and full bouquet. I'm going to grab a little bit of my red and my quinacridone, maybe a little of my ultramarine blue. I'm going to get a bit of a, look at that, kind of a deeper, not quite purple, but a burgundy going. On these, I really don't want to take out any good passages I have. Now, is that a Ron Burgundy? It is a Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I like to make sure that one side of the heart kind of has a little bit of a blend in. And I've got to soften this, but I don't want, I don't want it to just be a line. And I don't want to remove the passage. And that's really where I'm always just struggling is... How do I keep the red aspect of this wonderful, wonderful balloon and not take away? Look at that. So I'm going to really fight for it here. You can see me fighting for that moment in the balloon. It's as much as I can do for you, sir. The balloon's like, you know, you did what you could. You did what you could. And then I get into deeper red here. Trying not to take away all the fun in the balloons because the balloons are really fun, aren't they? That might be a little too far down for the highlight to go, so I can move that up a bit. Ah, it's a it's a delicate dance. And I'm like, you gotta move that highlight up to the top. You think kind of bring a little shadow down there. Maybe I get a little more into the pink this time. And I saturate that back up. Still doing pretty good. They're still pretty poppy, aren't they? Yeah. You just play with this. This is this is that time to really kind of work it out. So here. Maybe add a little shadow coming through here. Down low on that balloon, kind of rounding it out. Mm. Uh, is there? Uh, uh, is there? I may be insane. I swear it wasn't. It wasn't there earlier. Well, no, it probably wasn't there earlier, uh, Deanna. We're always working on our website. So here's the process. Uh, when we work on our website, pay patrons hear about this from me all the time. Um, as I go into groups and you guys comment, I'm going to get a little purple here and highlight that, and I look to see how things are going. If you say I'm having trouble with such and such or uh, something is broken or whatever. I go to the team and I'm like, I, well, I check it. And then if I also can duplicate your problem, then I go to the team and I'm like, hey, we got to fix it. And there were like three problems we were working on today. So it's entirely possible that your experience is based on the fact that we were working on like three problems today. 
um, that we were trying to get fixed in the system. I want to take away all this balloon's happy joy there. It's just, I'm going to really be fussy with my little brush. I've decided not to use anything but the number 10 today. Just. Just the number 10. Tending. I don't want to make them any darker than I have them. Um, CB, I'm trying to switch back and forth between acrylics and watercolor with confidence. Otherwise, I stick with one for years and lose confidence in the other. That is why. Oh, thank you. Can you microwave me again? So let's, uh, while we're having this, let us have a dry. Let's talk about mindset when we do multimedia. It can feel like um, it's really hard to switch media and that sometimes it doesn't necessarily seem like our skills translate. But what I find is, is that there's a little bit of a, a refamiliarizing yourself curve for sure. Like, oh, yeah, I paint from light to dark instead of dark to light. Or, oh, yeah, this is going to lift up if I want to go back and blend it where acrylic won't. Like, you'll notice that there are personality quirks between the mediums. But what they have in common is you, right? And so no matter where you, no matter where you go, there you are. You're their artist and you'll come into it. You can always work out your quirks. You can always figure it out. But what you will figure out over time is that there's this sort of bridge that always brings you back. And um, I, I, I even get excited about getting down into a new media where like, oh, I've never tried it, but I'm going to try it. And um, I get excited about it because because I find that I bring a lot with me that prepares me for that new medium. Now, I don't necessarily teach every medium online because I think teachers should be really familiar with what they teach. And um, I don't always agree with teachers going online and not knowing their media material or their safety or any of that because you have to answer a lot of questions for people. So that's why I don't teach oils. I would say I know more about oils than many people online um, who are teaching oils, um, but not at the level I understand acrylics and at the, understand, at the level I understand watercolor or drawing per se or pastels or one of the other mediums I'm more versed in. Um, and I know about oils because you know, for me, uh, studio safety, sometimes, you know, if it's it, lead pigment, I know is going to be poisonous or and difficult to get. And I could probably tell you the top 10 brands and oils that you could use with confidence. And I could tell you things to make your studio safer and that kind of stuff. But like sometimes that deep troubleshooting, yeah, I'm going to want to send you over to Andrew Tischler or somebody to be like, no, this is a person who's deeply invested in this media. So when you're into the weeds there, that's where you want to go. I don't ever know. Um, is the number 10 brush a perfect 10 today? As Heather C. And I agree. Uh, and then um, Terry says they have their personalities. I love that. Yeah, no, mediums have personalities. Wait till you see my gallery dish video. Oh my gosh, I've got a vlog coming up this Sunday. You guys have to be there over on the acrylic channel. You have to go over there. It's like galleries, everything an artist needs to know. Even if you don't want to hang in a gallery, you should hear me like go go crazy. I went crazy. I'm like dishing it. I'm dishing it. Yep. I'm, Shortcake is displeased with Jai that I left her Lindsay, in the kitchen. Lindsay, I recommend that you work in the one and two hoots um, for your classes. And I really recommend you do the beginner acrylic painting course just to do that refresh on um, the acrylic painting. Because even though we, we made it a beginner course, it's really actually very intermediate because I cover a lot of stuff people don't know maybe for years. And it's a good restart and reboot into those core skills. That would be my recommendation. And there's animals, which I know you love. Okay, Lindsay loves animals. I'm gonna get a little bit of water and I'm not gonna paint this wet into wet, guys. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Hansa yellow and let's get a little of the quinacridone gold. You could just use burnt sienna if you don't have quinacridone gold. And I'm gonna make kind of a warm yellow, very light. And I'm gonna come here and it's gotta be light. That's why you see me adding water to it. And I'm gonna bring back, it's very important that I leave some highlight here, which is why I'm not uh, even just trusting the paint to flow. Because at the crown, I wanna leave some highlight. Right. I do, I do. You can come get a little more yellow in there, but I just definitely want to, I want to have this crown of highlight here. 
And even though, you know, I'm going to be doing several layers, I do the brush strokes in the S curve with the flow of the hair. And I think about the highlights that are going to be in the hair. Do you guys want to do the gold class that we're doing over on acrylic here in watercolor where we practice metal gold? Like we practice a specific skill and like get better at it. I was thinking, I was wondering if you guys would want to do that. I think that'd be fun to watch. You know, because there, it's similar in watercolor, but it isn't always exactly the same. I would give us different teapots to paint. So we felt like we had some variance. <laughs> I just mention it because I was thinking about doing that since um, I'm going to get a little more of my purple and go back over the hearts. Um, I was going to be doing that for myself to tighten up my skills. Here's the thing. No matter where you are in your painting journey, you have to study. You have to study. And studying means that you look at specific topics and you do sketches and drawings and color studies and observances of those subjects repeatedly until you're sick of it so that oh my gosh i can't draw the dog got me <laughs> i just can't breathe i've been trying Ooh, oh god and i'm hotboxed in here too Whew. do you feel bad for me i feel bad for me <laughs> i don't even know what i was saying study art i love you twix she sits at my table and farts it's the whole journey <laughs> And Cinnamon's trapped in this, uh, this little room of <laughs> green screens and what curtains. We met her this morning. And... She got to could go your way. I'm sorry, God. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even talk. My eyes were watering. <laughs> just like trying to be all serious, but like it's in my mouth. You know, <laughs> like I just can't go on. Oh, I love that dog. Love her so much. Ooh, she's just dead asleep. She's, here, just she's out not there. even sorry. There's this one side eye looking up, going, just like, don't move me. All right, are I'm you drink and study. You should do it in art. All right. <laughs> oh, that dog and her farts are for real. No, oh my gosh, that was just so much, John. That was just so much. I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think I was going to make it. Uh. <sighs> wow, the paint almost had a minute to dry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit of my red. My hair is dry, so I can put in my dress. I hope she doesn't do that again. Thank you. Oh, she's up here sniffing, saying she's super sorry. <laughs> she knows she did it to me. And she's going. She's just going to go for a little adventure. She says, everyone's talking about me. I should walk around. All right. I'm going to load up my brush and come out to the skirt. I'm going to just... This is a fairly heavy and wet brush stroke so that I can get it to come out across the paper. Sometimes I go in the cup and just get water. Whew. It's cleared out now. I better. God, that was intense. You know, as I come kind of towards the back, the brush strokes are a little more vertical. And then as I go out towards the left, they bow. Oh, Heather C gave me like a fart tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is it? Have a fan <laughs> under the table. <laughs> She's got the little dog doing the squeak. <laughs> oh, combat pay. That's the difference between using our live streamer and live, live, live. <laughs> the dog parts cannot be edited out. Not when they melt the paint. Oh, my God. Now you've wetted this side much more. I did because I was having a little bit of trouble getting my uh, brush to really carry the paint.
I'll get to it again in a minute. Oof. Goodness gracious. All right. I'm going to go a little more into my yellow and quinacridone this time. Uh, and this is a, just so you know, it's like a quinacridone gold. Now, saint Allier calls it, yeah, it's quinacridone gold. Like everybody has a version of this and it's sort of just like a more transparent burnt sienna. Thank you very much, Crystal. I need coffee. Yeah, I need a sip of coffee. She's back. Ugh. Now I'm going to come up from the bottom of this and I'm going to just... kind of talk about the hair there leave room for flowers you've got to leave a little room for a little crest of flowers so don't get yeah. too over too over achievery come around there we go that's nice very blonde sometimes i'll come in with a damp brush and sort of feather up into the hair. Oops, too much quinacridone. A little more yellow. I didn't even nickel Ozo today at all. Huh. It's a mood. That's so controversial. Of me? I know. You didn't use nickel Azo. Such a good yellow, though. It's one of my favorite yellows. That's why sometimes it's nice to buy paint sets. I found nickel Ozo because I bought a Golden Artist Colors Core paint set. Oh, Ashley! Uh, a reminder for the dog fart, a hug for the Sherpa being boxed in with the smell and the taste. It was a perfect moment though, for you. Because <laughs> there's no smell of vision. Ah, I wish. You know how much fun I would have with Lindsay guys? says, uh, my mom said it's not you, Lindsay. It's the brush because I didn't use the right ones and the field can be a challenge. That's true. Lindsay, your tools can really be a hindrance to you as an artist. And it's important to pick the right tools. And I would much rather you guys, Lindsay does, Lindsay's mom is correct here. Um, you've got to realize that oftentimes it isn't you. So easy for students to blame themselves uh, about a challenge in something. But really often it's a tool or some outside obstacle to your journey. I'm just coming here and just, you can see these are sort of little curved strokes and they flow together. I might come in with just a little more quinacridone gold. Just a little more quinacridone gold. Look at that. Just fun. Really good hair today. She's having a good hair day. I love her hair day today. Okay, I'm going to get some opera pink. I'm going to tap out some opera pink. It's like little dots. These are little flowers. You're not getting each petal. You're just having a bit of a... A bit of a cluster, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my, oh, there we go, nickel ozzle yellow. You could still use your Hansa yellow if that was the one yellow that you had. And get a very bright green. Ooh. And just tap a little bit out there. It's just nice. Give it a little yeah. shrubbery in her hair. little shrubbery. Isn't that lovely? Now I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take a paper towel. Paper towel? I'm going to fold it kind of in, maybe in thirds. I just want to make a little resist like this right here. You guys see that? Yeah. A little bit of a resist. I'll even put a brush on it so it stays still. Okay. Now what you doing? I'm going to take my little round brush and I'm going to get some drops of my colors. And I'm going to get very wetted out. And make a little splash. And see, that's just enough to keep the drops from where I don't want them on her. On her hair? Yeah. 
get a little bit more of my magenta. Just kind of a nice little brush stroke down. Here we go. Guys, look what we did today. <laughs> you painted the girl. We painted the girl. Uh oh, hello from India, Aman. Um, how are you today? I hope wonderful and you're this having evening, lots maybe? of wonderful blessings in your life. Hmm? Could be this evening. Could be right, this morning. Right, I don't time know, I don't changes. Know what, what side of the? <sighs> That's right. Time. I got to look at the world clock to know. To where be really honest, I need you? the world clock to know what time it is. Almost where I am, but for sure I, anywhere else. I think it's nighttime. Is it nighttime? I'm pretty sure it's getting close. To All right, midnight. then. Good evening. I'm pretty sure. Um. <laughs> All right. Uh, Deborah loves the drops. It's a pretty painting. And Deanna says, I try to buy what cinnamon uses that way. And I know it's me, not my tools. So I that's why I do share, though I'll tell you what, this this feral coming loose irked me. I gotta glue that on. Um E5000. The brands that I like, I like the core. And this is the core watercolor by Golden. I like the Aquile by Sen Lelier. I like, where is my Daniel Smith? I know I've got a tube just already here. It's Daniel Smith is very, very good. Uh, um, we all know Schmicky is good. Of course, Schmicky is good. And then I do also like me some Holbein, which I have here, some tubes of it. I got little tubes of it, little little tubes of Holbein watercolor. The Holbein watercolor is not as blooming. You have to add an agent, so it's a very tight watercolor. The core watercolor is extra pigmented in the most blooming. You don't have to add another thing to get it to go across your page. Daniel Smith is really new on the scene. They're a very new paint maker comparatively. Like this is 250 years old and probably was used by all the impressionists you love. And this is really new in the last few years. However, I really like their watercolor. They do because they don't have preconceptions of what you can or should do. They do a lot of really unexpected things and they are the masters of granular watercolor. And then of course, you know, the nice thing about Sennelier as a company is that the oils match the pastels, match the watercolors, match the acrylics. Yes. So there are some thoughts on product. Um, what's my mom's name? Oh, Ginger Cook. Was that what it was asked? I don't know. If you're asking what my mom's name is, Ginger Cook. Ginger Cook Live, she teaches acrylic. Hmm. Um, but I, I don't think it was that because it got, it, got, it got tagged by YouTube. Uh, I think what it, everyone's. It's just you look really nice today. Oh, thank you. You look very, and there were, everyone is enjoying day. how pretty you look. Today. Do you ever have a day where you're just like, I'm almost going to do a TikTok because my hair is good? <laughs> like, I don't really have anything important to Ooh, say. Good question. <laughs> now, if you weren't going to Outback and you didn't want to culturally appropriate stuff from Australia. Yeah. What is the use of blooming in terms of watercolor? Because we don't want to talk about onions. We want to talk about the watercolor. So what, what does blooming mean? Oh my mean? gosh, for a minute I thought you were going to talk about stealing ochre from indigenous people. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> so so don't do that. That would be bad. No. Don't do that. Um, so blooming is the way watercolor travels through the paper when the paper is wet. Um, can you pass me that pad down there and I'll pull a sheet off of it because it's pretty dry. Because I'm just saying that I, I don't think that Outback Steakhouse has anything in common with, like, actual Australian cuisine. Is this what you're looking for? Yeah. Is there one on there already There's painted? There's one on there. It's oh, painted on there. Can you remove it? Do you have a thingy to remove it? I don't know if I have a thing. I'll show you blooming. We'll talk no, about don't blooming. don't paint on that, though. you got to have a, you gotta have a, a kniff. A kniff. I, I think I put my uh, palette right. knife back over at the I'll other one. I'll go fix it. I'll be right back. Right. So John's going to pull it, and I'll just... Well, you know, we're here for a second, and I'll dem I will demo uh, watercolor blooming for you guys, um, and talk about it and how to get a better bloom. All right. So if you do have watercolor blocks that I'm always talking about, all right, this is still gonna dry. Um, we do watercolor blocks because as the paper dries, it pulls all the wrinkles that it wants to get in it. Because when you wet paper, it wants to wrinkle, 
if you haven't pre-stretched it and taped it down, it's going to be a real problem for you. Blocks are the easy, easy workaround. This is a lesson if you want to know how to paint that tree um, on this channel. All right, so let's talk about blooming. And I'll even put out the watercolor. I was like, it doesn't really bloom very much. I'll use some different ones and tell you what they're doing. All right. Show me where you're going to do it so I can get it targeted. I'm going to go right here in the middle. Okay, I'm going to use up a whole sheet. Don't panic, guys. Hold on. We're gonna get that. I'm going to get all in close to wherever you're going to go. My water's got a lot of pigment in it, so it's a little pig. But that's okay. It'll help John find it and it won't hurt. Oh, I can see it. I just want to make sure. See, the thing is, the, I want to stay tight on the focus of wherever you're going to go. Okay. Because it, um, So let's go with quinacridone right here. Okay, hold We're going to go with golden artist colors. That's the core. Right, sure and I nice told and you guys that that has the most bloom, and we're going to go with the quinacridone, and I'm going to load up on my brush, and I'm going to just touch. I'm going to go from the dry, but then when I touch the water, what do you see? The way that paint moves out across the water. See that there? That's blooming. That is a lot of blooming for one paint. Usually you have to add oxgall to your water like significantly to do that. Now I'm going to grab some of the uh, Holbein watercolor and I'll come here and I'll just show you what I mean. It's tighter. So where this moved all kinds of places, the bloom on this, even in a wet area, is much more under control. It doesn't travel very far, does it? It's got a tight bloom. That's what they mean. Tight watercolor. It's very loose. It does a lot of things you don't expect. It just, it just irks you in every way that it can. Here is, I'm going to get the opera pink, which is the Sennelier. Where are you going with that? I'll go on the other side of the brown, the opera pink. Pretty tight as well. Oh, and the pyro, or pyro red's also the Sun LA, so I'll go with some pyro red as well. So it blooms. Not as much as the core, but a little more than the uh, um, uh, uh, Holbein, and then I'll put out some. Oh, that's a nice comment you want by Lindsay. Huh? You should see that right there. Oh, Lindsay, Art Trip is my, is my most artist that ever helped me build my art skills. Thank you. I, you're a great artist, Lindsay, and I want you to never stop painting. And I'm really glad to be part of your art journey. It is my honor. Where's the little you? There's right. little you. Now we're going to come right here to this last little spot, and I'll show you the Daniel Smith. This is the Daniel Smith. Oh. I'm going to wet it out on the phthalo green, and I'll come over here. It also has a beautiful bloom. See that go? There's a nice phthalo green on them. So those are the ones that I like. Core, a Holbein watercolor, Aquael by Sennelier, and Daniel Smith. And I do like watercolors that are boutique watercolors by artists like uh, Eul and uh, Jasper Stardust. I think that's very cool. I like making my own watercolors. It's really fun because you can control how much pigment is in there. And everything that's going on. I'll show you my very, very favorite blooming watercolor real quick. Where you go? Okay. I'm gonna go right here. Well, don't this one do is of all, all the things I think it has the best bloom of any watercolor yep. ever. Then let me get on it over there. Cut and focus. Let me really load up my brush. Where are you gonna start at? Okay. I'll start right here. It's just my favorite. This is the Payne's Gray by Golden Artist Colors, and it's their bloomiest bloom. I don't know why. I'm sure they have a very scientific reason. If I call them, they'd be like, oh, it's because this pigment does this in water already naturally. But it just does the most beautiful stuff, doesn't it? Look at these little passages. Like, perfect for abstract painting. I just think it's the coolest. That is this one right here. If you only bought one color from Core, I would buy the Payne's Gray. I don't know why you would only have one color. But if you only had one color, that's the color I would get. All right. So hopefully that kind of answers that question just an eensy bit. Mm -hmm. That was a good um, class today. And, uh, you know, and you guys who were here today, you know it. The gold, the Big Art Quest in acrylic on gold starts tomorrow at 1. Um, 
I'm just going to sit here for a really long time and paint gold things because they're studies. <laughs> I'm working on me too, right? I'm, I have to study art. You have to study art. And then we have a couple of paintings where we test how we learned our skills at like, so we go like a bunch of metal things and then we paint a metal horse and then we do a bunch of metal fabric. And then for some reason we paint metal lips. Um, and then I might give the uh, patrons a test with fabric. Um, but the metal is for everybody. And then nobody puts Sherpa in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, if you want, I can start adding some study courses for us to work on here, which is just lots of little paintings on a subject. Like we would paint all of the strawberries or all the leaves or all of something until we feel like we understand that topic and how it's created in our media better. It's a type of thinking about it. It doesn't really have replayability on YouTube, but YouTube, SchmooTube, Facebook, Schmashbook, sometimes you got to do stuff because it's good for you as an artist. So if I can get you in the practice of painting every day, daily painting like acrylic April, and buying all the good stuff that like from good companies that treat you as as the gems you are as consumers because art companies need you they're a small niche business they need your business and um so they got to treat you good and uh, studying your art you all will be better better painters every single day paint every day paint something a little bit every day if you want to learn how to draw i've got the new patron class going uh on the art sherpa patronage um uh we're working on all the little things that made it a little hinky to sign up on mobile. But remember, you can set your own price. Um, it can, you have to sign in, though, right now to the website to see them. So you need to make an account. We're working on it where when you go get the patronage, you have an account. It just makes the whole, everything at the same time. Right? Yep. We're trying to fix that. But today, just make an account, and then you can go sign up. And you should do that because we're drawing every Monday. Every Monday. Every Monday. I think our next upcoming drawing is a orange or something with but it's got flowers and leaves so drawing all right monochromatic all right guys listen art is fun keep doing it keep painting have a lot of, have a blast i'm gonna turn this into something abstract be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at an easel really soon Bye bye